right. Good afternoon, everybody. Brochem Aboyim. Let's learn our Thursday shear in Kedushas Levi. We are in the book of Leviticus, chapter 12. Isha ki says Riah, the old Zochem. Ubiyom Hashmini, Yemol Besor Orlosoi. When a woman gives birth, literally gives seed, and she gives birth to a male. And on the eighth day, you shall uh, circumcise the flesh of his foreskin. That's Leviticus chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Rabbi Makshim, Mashaychus, Zeh, Luviyayim Hashmini. What does one thing have to do with another? What are we talking about here? Everyone asks this question. Or a lot of people ask it. It seems there is a supernal spiritual arousal. God has mercy on his people Israel, meaning the Jewish people. I'm not talking about a political entity here. Because of his attribute that is called merciful and gracious, and for this reason of his mercy and his grace, he created all the worlds. As our sages taught, because he is called merciful, sometimes God has mercy on the Jewish people because of the lower inspiration. Like when the Jewish people are asking God to have mercy on them. Then he has mercy on them. Please God have mercy on us. Let's all say that together. Please God have mercy on us. On the whole world needs mercy right now because we certainly don't deserve anything so all we can ask for is mercy because we don't deserve it of course we have to try to be better and try to be faithful but we know for sure that we do not deserve this mercy and that's what it means when we ask for mercy something that is undeserved as our sages teach in the Talmud Yevamas Samich Dalad Amad Beis that will be 64b. Menayim Shekadosh Baruch Hu Mesabu Mosfid Mosan Shel Tzadikim. Where do we derive that God desires very strongly? It's a term that's that Mesabu is a term that we use for lust. That's how God feels. The way we feel about lust, all the more so because this is, we're talking about God here. That's how He feels about the um, the prayers of the righteous. That's how excited God gets when people pray. And you don't have to be a big holy rabbi. You could every year is a tzad. Like like our friend Joey Newcomb likes to say and, and our friend the, the Nicholas Berger Rebbe likes to say. And the truth is, any good person could be a big tzaddik. You don't have to be Jewish necessarily. You could be from Hasidu Musa Olam, and, and Hasidu Musa Olam, according to Rashi, means whatever religion you are. You can also be a big tzaddik. But God wants our prayers. God wants our prayers. I, I'll, I'll be honest. You know, God loves the prayers of Christians and Muslims too. Now, we. we we firmly believe that those religions are false and wrong. But that doesn't mean that God puts aside the prayers of Christians and Muslims and Hindus and Buddhists and even atheists. Maybe he doesn't desire those prayers as much as the prayers of the righteous, but he still desires. But if they're Hasidim was all of they're good people. They live a good, pious life, ethical life, a committed life, a thoughtful life, a meaningful life, and they pray, 
as they understand it, because nobody understands God. We don't understand God. We just know that God gave us his word. He gave us his Torah, which is the greatest gift that mankind has ever been given. So these other religions believe that they received the greatest gift. We just know we're right, right? But with that, with that being said, that doesn't mean that God disrespects those prayers if you're from another religion. But that's from the Bible. That's from Malachi. Malachi says that even the prayers... Of, who, who was there other than the pagans in those days? So the pagan prayers, the pagan offerings, God says is a mincha tahora, is a pure offering. Godol shmi bagayim, Amar Hashem Tzvamis. Right? Great is my name among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Meaning among the heathen nations, God's name is great. Just because they call God by a different name and they don't know the truths of our Torah doesn't mean that if a human being made in the image of God turns to God in a sincere prayer as he understands that God is going to say this is disgusting. No. And if you're, if you're a tzaddik, you're a righteous, saintly person, for sure God loves those prayers. I, I, can't, I can't imagine differently and, like, and I prove that biblically. And it's what I learned from my Rebbe. So if, if you have a problem with that, that's the Masorah that I've received. And, and, and I've learned through Shas, and I learned the Gemara Menachos that, that looks at that and says that. So anyway, but that's not the point of what we're saying. Of course, Jewish writers are focused on Jews. That's totally natural, just like Christian writers are focused on Christians and Muslim writers are focused on Muslims. It's not, nothing strange about that, nothing we have to apologize for. I'm just saying a truth here. Uh, but that's not the point of what we're saying. The point of what we're saying here, though, is that God desires our prayers. And what Emma said to the Kaddish Baruch Hu, Chav of Yoyser, is Arurus Melamata, Al Rachamim is Arurus Melamala. Very interesting thing. The truth is, says the, the Heilige Kaddish Baruch the Heilige Kaddish Slave, Rebbe Levi Yitzchak, the truth is that God finds much more desirable. He finds much more attractive, much more beloved. The inspiration that comes from below more than the mercy that he gives from above. Meaning, we want God's mercy. God wants us to ask for that mercy. And and again, whatever exists in God is infinite. And so these desires, even though we, we cannot anthropomorphize God in his essence, right? But whatever we have, he has. And much more, obviously. Meaning, if he created us, he couldn't give us something that he doesn't have. And so our feelings of love, our desires in the world, our love of mercy, all of those things are created by God. Now, all of those things have to be used in the proper way. That's something, that's the mistake people make. The word to'eva means atatoeva. The word abomination means something means a mistake that you're making. Meaning God gave you a gift and you're perverting it. The feeling of love for another person is not the abomination. It's the expression of that love in an improper and an unhealthy way. That's an abomination. And that's a mistake that we make. It's not a mistake God made. God didn't make a mistake giving you a feeling. You're making a mistake if you use that feeling in an improper way. And we all make those mistakes. I'm not judging anybody who makes those mistakes. I've made those mistakes. We all, made the, we all make those mistakes. 
we have to understand where that comes from. It all comes from God. Everything comes from God. It's not God versus the devil in Judaism. It's God, God, God. God creates good and creates evil. And it's our job to try to do things the right way. You know, and the right way is the way God told us. And so you can't go and say you're, you're, you're allowed to do whatever you want because God gave, no, God gave you a guidebook of how to live. And that's not hateful on people who live differently. That's recognition of God's wisdom, of God's infinite wisdom. We do have to hate evil, though. And God put hatred into us for that purpose of hating evil problem is, again, people make mistakes. God gave the gift of hatred, where there's a time to love and a time to hate, right? And we use it for the wrong things. That's the great uh, confession of Rabbeinu Nissim that says, the things that you loved, I hated. The things you hated, I loved. The things that you took seriously, I took lightly. And the things you took lightly, I took seriously. That's the confession we have to make. That's our sin. And there's a whole list of them. The things you prohibited, I permitted. And the things you permitted, I prohibited. And that too we have to confess. That was such a sin. Today is Erev Rosh Chodesh. We don't say, we don't say Yom Kippur Katan today because it's Nisa. But it's something to have to be aware of, you know. So anyway, but the point is, is that God has desires because he can only give us something that he has, right? But he only can give us, he only gives us a small fraction of what he has. And that's the other thing, is that we're, we're, we're we want, we don't even know, you know, that, that's my holy and wise wife, she should be well, she always says about it with the Zara, about idolatry, is that the sin of idolatry is Instead of embracing God in his entirety, it's embracing only one small piece of God in his creation. You know, it's like if you were in love with someone and all you focused on was the, their left lower earlobe, you know, and you made a whole, and, and, and again, I mean, again, I don't mean to be disgusting, but I'm pointing something out for a reason. There's a term that's used both for a Vedazara I'm not going to mention the word. But it's a word that's used for idolatry that's also used for an unhealthy obsession that is expressed in the wrong way. And so there's something apropos in that, right? In, in using that term, not apropos in the expression. The expression is wrong. But the, the use of that same term for two different things is, is actually... It, it's demonstrative of the intent. So anyway, God looks forward to our prayers. He wants our prayers. He loves our prayers. Bezel Rem is Isha Kisasriya. That's what it means. When a woman bears seed. Isha. Because the created worlds that God created are feminine in nature. Right? Because the difference between male and female, right? In the union of male and female, is the male is giving something and the female is receiving something. And so those represent archetypically. God and creation. That's why we speak of Mother Earth, right? That's, that's not only a pagan idea. It's also a pagan idea, but it is an idea that we have in Judaism. Aim Habonim Smecho. The joyous mother of children is a reference to Eretz Yisrael which is an archetype for the for land, for the earth in general. 
the Holy Land is, is Mother Earth. And it's Bechina of the Shechina, Bechina of Malchus. So anyway, this concept is so Isha ki says we Isha ki says we ha. When a woman bears seed, what does it mean? Kasher ha'olam shem Yisrael is arim rachamim. That when the world, which of which is the archetype of the Klal Yisrael of the Jewish people. When they are arousing mercy, the elder Zachar gives birth to a male, Kleim Arachmim Gedolim, Chazakim, meaning big, strong, masculine mercies. Interesting, mercy. Think of, think of mercy as being feminine. The word Rachamim is related to word Rechem, which means the womb. And so, Etymologically, the Hebrew term for mercy is the womb. Yet we speak of Av Harachami, the father of mercy, the father of the womb. Claim Harachamim Gedolim Chazakim, but it's a masculine energy. That's because mercy sometimes has to be with strength and power. When you have very strong mercy, very strong compassion, that's a masculine energy in the archetypal sense. And so we can explain this scripture, homiletically speaking, that the mercy which represents a lower form, not lower in the level of, of, uh, of status, but an arousal that comes from below. That's very precious and beloved to God. That's what it means, homiletically and archetypically, that on this eighth day, you shall surely um, circumcise the flesh of the of the foreskin. This can be explained in the way that our, our rabbis taught there was a, 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 a Greek or Roman philosopher, a Gentile philosopher, asked our rabbis, which one is more beautiful? God's work or man or something that's man-made, human work? Which one which one is are, are we supposed to be naturalists? Are we supposed to be humanists? Which, which one is superior? The truth is there's positive aspects in both. But which one is more beautiful? Where is there more beauty? In nature or in that which is man-made? So then, answering this philosopher, the rabbis answered with a question. Typical Jewish thing. Yeah, answer a question with a question, right? Well, it's become cliche to say that. And they ask, Lama HaKadosh Baruch Adam Why did God create the human being with a foreskin, uncircumcised? Ve'ishev lo'i she'akadosh baruch ha'retzayin l'zaka yisis Yisrael. And the answer is, this is very deep. God's great desire is to bring merit to the Klal Yisrael, to the Jewish people, and really to all mankind. Meaning, God gave this gift to humankind to be able to make things that are beautiful. 
And God's desire is to make us partners with him in creation. We find from this, that God has a greater love, affection, for, for an inspiration, for an arousal that comes from below, meaning human work, particularly religious devotion, right? Than that which he gives from above. It gets God so excited and happy that we are fulfilling our purpose. Because he could have just made us angels. But he didn't make us angels. He could have just made us robots. He didn't make us robots. He made us human beings with challenges, with complexity, with difficulty, with struggles. This way, when we're victorious in that battle, God is so happy because he, because we won the battle. You know, we went through the, like, the, the hero's journey. And when God reads the story of our life, so to speak, homiletically speaking, he enjoys reading that story. It's a good show. Well done. Right? Zehu. And, and that to God is much more interesting than that which He pours down on us. He'd rather see us work hard and earn something than us than Him just give something to us. And we we appreciate that more too. So it works both ways. And that's what it means. On the eighth day you shall circumcise. Yoiser is ours that there is much more esteem for an arousal that comes from below, the human handiwork, than there is from that which is natural, that which comes from God. And that's also the answer to these other things that I brought up. Because so many people just want to be natural and go with the flow. And what they wind up doing is not really being natural. They fool themselves into thinking that they're natural because they're going in their most base lusts and not following the proper pattern. But the thing is, the Torah comes from God. And so if you really want to go with the flow of bittel to HaKadosh Baruch is the true path of least resistance. Instead of going with our base Yetzirah human frailty, we, we strive for something much more sublime. And that's what God wants from us. He wants us to be better than our nature. He wants us to be sublime, to be exalted. And we do that by, we lift ourselves up by the bootstraps, so to speak, instead of just letting go and letting God. The real way to let go and let God is through devotion to Torah. Not what we think it is, letting go and letting God. Because we have to let go and let God. But we let go and let, let God in a devotional way. That through bittle, not through nullifying ourselves. We have to nullify ourselves in front of the Almighty, not just, you know, do whatever, whatever feels good, because in the end it doesn't feel good. That's the thing. God loves us. He's not trying to take away your fun. He's not, he's trying to make life more fun. Because people who live a secular life, a godless life, are miserable. Nobody's happy without God, without purpose, without something more sublime, without spirituality that gives you structure. You know, you can indulge in all kinds of things and you're not going to be happy with it. It's not going to give you satisfaction, happiness, 
fulfillment, mental health, anything. It's just going to ruin you. But <coughs> when you live with a purpose and with ethics, with morals, you know. And I know that because I am a sinner. I know that because I've been there. I know that because I've done a lot of things wrong. And it's just not fun. It's just not that great. You know, I mean, there's a song um, from, there's, they're not from, they're secular Jewish kids, three brothers, and they're very deep thinkers. They're, I, I consider them the, the um, and they're from Queens also. They're like the Simon and Garfunkel of our generation, and I think they're better than Simon and Garfunkel. I know Rabbi Weinberger is a big cousin of Simon and Garfunkel. I never got Simon and Garfunkel. I'm much more a Johnny Cash guy or a Gene Autry guy. But um, but this they're called AJR. And they're a little vulgar, but they're very deep. They're brilliant. And they and and they have this song. Uh, can we skip to the good part? And it's a very sad song because they're secular and they're they don't know how to embrace the good part. And it's interesting because I compare that to um, listening to Johnny Cash sing Christian songs, but that are not really Christological or not that Christological. And, and his music, although he also talks about pain and misery and suffering, and hurt and all these things throughout his, but I'm saying his 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 uh, gospel songs, and not all not all of them are his. You know, the peace in the peace in the valley, which is not you know that's a that's a traditional Christian hymn, and it's mostly and it's very eschatological and mostly based in in, in Navi Yeshayahu, and it's obviously slightly Christological because it's Christians who sing it, but for the most part, you know. That's forward-looking, because it's looking to Moise Mashiach. Of course, they're thinking it's the second coming, we know it's just the first, whatever it is. Whereas this, but they know it's going to get to, you know, a, a believer of whatever faith you will have knows that in the end it's, there's going to be that good part, you know. Although I, I remember talking to someone who's a devout Catholic, and he's talking about how in the Norse mythology there is an idea that eventually there, it's, everything's going to go back to chaos, and it's not ultimately looking forward to something more positive. And he, and he found something very inspiring in that, that, that just be good for goodness sake, and not necessarily looking at the perfect eschatol, eschaton. But in any event, these kids in AJR they they um, they're, they're like when are we going to get to this good part is there going to be a good part you know like if, if this if this was on the movie screen would it be a happy ending and then there's like the one line where they're like I smoked at dances but it, it didn't feel that great you know you try to fill that God shaped hole with all kinds of stuff, with whether it's permitted or, or prohibited, you try to fill it up with that. And if God's not with you in that, it's it doesn't feel so great. It just doesn't work. It's just not it's not that great. It's not fulfilling. But if you have God with you, then oh, then everything's amazing, right? And you can eat and drink enjoy your relationships with, with your spouse and everything and, and, and just have a great life because God is the third person there with you and it's just great, it's just wonderful, it's just exalted, it's just, but it is with, together with, you're doing something with it too. And that's, you know, the big mistake of Christianity is that it's just like, Everything is God's grace, and and your works are meaningless, and and, and you're, you know, ju you're just filthy rags. All your works, no, your rags, your works are not filthy rags. Your works are silver and gold. Of course, they're not perfect. Of course, you can always do tshuva. Of course, you th th you can always do better. But don't put down how great God loves your good deeds. God loves your good works. 
even if they're not perfect, especially they're not perfect because it's it's just so much, it's so beautiful and wonderful because that's the purpose. That's why we're here, and and we feel the satisfaction with that. It's amazing. That's that's the difference between Judaism and Christianity in that in that realm. You know, because we 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 will never say all our you know all our works are filthy rags. No, we can't say that. We recognize that they're imperfect. We recognize they could be better. We can do tshuva. And then what? If it's God, turn your, all of our sins into a merit. It, it, it's, it, God ha- loves us and he wants just good, the best for us. And we just have to turn to him. We do have to seek out God's grace and mercy. And he loves it when we seek it out. He loves it when we beg for his mercy. It's, and it's, it's a, it, 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 and, and everything that we experience in the world is really just an archetype. I mean, you know there's a Shira Shirim. You know there's a Song of Songs, the Song of Solomon. All of that, everything we experience in the world is just an archetype for that which is divine, which is much higher, much more sublime, totally, obviously, spiritual, but very... But it, it, with, with the, those feelings that, that we can have in our relationship with God are greater than anything else that could be in the world. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. And we'll see you all later. Thank you. How do I turn this thing off? It's not turning off. What, what do I press? There we go. What? Did I do that right?